Um, people are still joining on, so uh, uh, we'll wait a few more minutes before Michal starts. Uh, in the meantime, I'd like to introduce Doron Klein. He is our CEO, and he will say a few words, uh, general words about uh, Telfed, sort of for those of you who don't, uh, are not familiar with Telfed. Please, Doron. Yael. And first and foremost, I want to thank Yael and Michal for putting together this uh, wonderful webinar. Such an important service for our Olim and potential Olim as well. And uh, Kola Kavod to the two of you for the wonderful work you're doing in the field of employment. And uh, I hope that uh, by the end of this evening, the end of the seminar, you're all going to come away with some very important tools that will help you in the field of employment in Israel. Just a little bit about Telfed and the organization that stands behind this webinar. Telfed was founded in 1948. We've been around since the establishment of the State of Israel. And we were founded then by the South African Zionist Federation to look after the 800 Machal soldiers who came to fight in the War of Independence. Those were 800 Southern Africans with World War II experience who came to help the new, newly founded IDF in their War of Independence. Thank God we were successful. At the end of the war, the South African Zionist Federation said, you know, close up shop, come back to South Africa. Lo and behold, a lot of those 800 wanted to stay. And since 1948, we've been here assisting the absorption of Olim and helping them to find jobs as well. That includes Olim also from other countries. In the 1960s, we helped the absorption of the Olim from Yemen. In the 80s and 90s, it was the first 500 families that came from the former USSR. This century, it's been Olim from Iran, from Holland. And now from uh, currently, we're helping those from Australia and also from the United Kingdom. Uh, we have a full-time Klita advisor, uh, which is in, in touch with the Olim pre-Aliyah, post-Aliyah. We have 20, uh, 24 regional representatives, regional committees to help the Olim with their absorption. A full-time social worker helping people that are going through a difficult time. Uh, last month, we assisted 450 very needy individuals who needed financial assistance. Uh, the employment department you're familiar with, scholarships. This is uh, perhaps for some of you, your children, your grandchildren. Last year we gave out over 500 scholarships. So please make sure that you, you your kids, your grandkids are listed on the, the Telfed website so that they'll be eligible to apply for those scholarships. Telfed scholarships can reach up to 9,000 shekels uh, for the academic year. Uh, the sign-up is now open, so make sure that those are, that are eligible, that they should be on the database and should apply. If you're not on the database or your kids or grandkids aren't on the database, then please inform Yael so she can update that database. We currently have, uh, we have a lot of um, virtual events. Normally, we have about 90 regional events throughout the year with about 5,000 participants. We now, like this evening, are all on a virtual platform. But I invite you to join those events, just like you've enjoyed, joined the seminar tonight. Really special events that are very enlightening, informative. So if you'd like to join those events, please just drop a line to Yael and she'll put you in touch with our events coordinator. This week, we're having a special summer camp, a virtual summer camp for young kids. So if that applies for any of you, for your kids or your grandchildren, and if you don't know about it, look on our website, look on the Facebook page. If you can't find those details, again, just drop your Ella line and she'll send you the, the link. And um, let your kids enjoy the virtual events that are there. If you're not getting the Telfed magazine or the Telfed newsletter, then please inform your L. It means something's not right with your details on the database. And please go onto the Telfed Facebook page and like that Facebook page. There's three and a half thousand people on that Facebook page. And some of them also could help you get a job. So be active on that Facebook page and be part of it. Um, last and last but not least, Telfed is a non-profit organization. Um, through our apartments, we're the only OLE organization that provides uh, housing for OLIM. Uh, out of those 105 apartments that we provide at 30% below market rates, so 70% of the income from that, those rentals goes to help the needy. We also administer over 100 trust funds, and that's how we supply money for the scholarships. But we still have to fundraise for another 40% of our budget. So please, God, when each one of you get your dream job, please remember this amazing seminar that Michal and Yael organized for you. And uh, remember where to send that donation to help other people that will be looking for jobs when you already have your amazing one. So don't forget us. Have a wonderful evening.
thank you once again to Michal and to Yael for putting this together and for being there for you guys to help you with your uh, employment journey in the state of Israel, preparing for it once you're in it, the future. I want to wish each and every one of you good luck um, and uh, may that dream job come to you very soon. That's Lacha Todaraba. Thank you, Doron. Uh, okay, so uh, we'd like to go ahead and start. First of all, I'd like to introduce Michal Merten. Michal, if you can wave, our career counselor. Uh, she will be Hello, everyone. giving the webinar this evening. Uh, right now, all of you are muted. Um, so if you have something to say, if you have a question, if you can write it down in the uh, chat, and we will, uh, I'll, be, I'll be monitoring the chat and then um, I'll tell Michal about the questions. We'll try to answer them throughout. And if not, then we'll have a session at the end if you have something that hasn't been answered. Uh, so please, Michal, the stage is yours. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. Hello, everyone. So without further ado, we'll just go on to my presentation. So, what we'd like to talk about today is about creating a strategic plan for your job search. Um, for those of you who don't know me or we haven't met on or offline, um, as you also kindly introduced me, I'm Michal Merten, and I'm, I'm a life coach and HR specialist and have been for the past um, 20 plus years helping people making choices that improve their lives with an expertise in employment and career planning, and I was in HR for many years before that. Um, so you want to search for a job, and where do you start? We had three webinars uh, up to now. We, um, uh, we spoke about uh, your CV and uh, on how to brand yourself on LinkedIn. And so this is the, the third step. Uh, sometimes it's actually a first step. And why is strategic planning so important? Uh, searching and applying for a job uh, is very time consuming. And you'll probably hear uh, very often that it's a full-time job in itself. By managing your time and organizing it properly, you can establish a plan that will, first of all, make you feel maybe a little bit more in control of what you're doing and why you're doing it and how. Um, and by organizing it better, I feel that it becomes less daunting and in fact produces better results. So, how to develop a strategic job search plan? Now, these are, uh, we're recording this session, right, Yael? Yeah? We are recording this time? Yes, we are. Okay, we didn't forget. Um, so, you can go back afterwards and you can look at everything. Um, this list is not necessarily in um, any given order, although I find that the first thing you should do is determine and list your career goals. Um, very often, people start. Uh, on the job search um, and the first thing they do is write their CV and that's good but if you embark on a journey you should know where you're going so what your career goals are I feel should be the first thing and that is best helped by listing your experience now this is for yourself listing your experience your skills and your strength and that way creating your personal brand um, yeah, and I were just discussing this before that in fact we are when we're job searching we are marketing ourselves we are the brand so the better we know ourselves what our professional value proposition is what our professional brand is the easier it becomes to market ourselves we also want to research both the ideal company and job title so we want to go on one hand to the ideal, and on the other hand, we want to brainstorm ideal companies you'd like to work for. So job title on one hand, and uh, companies you want to work for on the other. Then you can go on to building a to-do list for all your job search items. We'll be discussing each of these points as we go along. And I cannot stress enough 
participating in networking opportunities. That should be part of your job strategy. And of course, following up on the companies you've applied to. Um, were there questions so far, Yael? I, saw, I think I saw oh, two it's questions. Okay. It's okay, I answered in the chat. Okay, wonderful, thanks. So, set smart goals. Um, it's very easy to get lost in how to set goals, which goals to set. But if you remember this, to be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant and time-based. If you create a, a smart goals plan, you should do well. Um, I've prepared a, an example by what I mean. So say I want a leadership position. It sounds like a bit lofty and not very exact, but if I look at it as a smart goal, then they ask for specific, um, I want to earn a position managing a development team for a startup tech company. So that's very specific. It's not just any leadership position. I want it to be measurable. So I will apply to three open positions for the manager of a development team of a tech startup. Achievable, um, I will update my resume with relevant qualifications. Relevant, to achieve my goal, I will update my resume with relevant qualifications so I can apply to three open positions for the manager of a development team of a tech start startup. And finally, time-based, and this is the SMART uh, goal, to achieve my goal of being in leadership, I will update my resume with relevant qualifications so I can apply to three open positions for the manager of a development team at a tech startup this week. Okay, yeah, and you can apply that to any goal, uh, whether it's a job search or your studies or networking, as long as it's smart, you'll get there. So you have your goals, now we want to look at our skills. Your, your experience, your skills, your strengths, they can be from previous jobs, they can be qualities, they can be um, traits that, uh, an experience you uh, gain from volunteering. Once you list them, it helps you better understand where your talents lie and how, if and how you can apply them to the various companies and roles that you will identify in a minute. So I mentioned PVP and I mentioned that when we were discussing how to write your CV and how to write your LinkedIn profile. Your professional value proposition is in fact your brand. It's what will create uh, your personal brand and can make your mark, you can make a difference. Especially now with Corona, where so many companies have either frozen completely their hiring funnel or have um, considerably reduced it, you want to stand out. So your professional value proposition should be about how are you different? What is the value that only you or most of you can bring to the company? It should answer the question of why you? Why should you, hi should you hire me rather than someone else? So I'm just not just a salesperson, I'm a salesperson who has increased sales by 20% year over year uh, by improving the uh, sales funnel or the lead generation for my company. Um, the more specific you are, the more resulted or result oriented you are, the clearer your PVP is. So you can start by um, just writing down all your skills, all your experience, everything you know, um, you know, have a, put it all down on paper and then start gradually uh, condensing it until what you have is one to five sentences. And that's your PVP. And that you can use as your headline on LinkedIn. You can use that to, um, to make yourself noticed um, on your CV. And you can use that when you target companies and of course in your interview, because it's going to come up in the interview. Uh, 
questions so far? Anyone? Okay. So, you start your job search, you have your CV, you have your LinkedIn profile, you have your PVP, you start looking for a job. Now be selective. Um, you can hunt for a job by casting a very large net and just you know sending your CVs to as many companies as possible. Because of, especially because of the present climate, I urge you to be selective. The right number of jobs to apply is different for each person. Well, we, you know, as a rule of thumb, I would say try and send 10 to 15 uh, job applications uh, a week, but it really differs and it really depends on the types of jobs that you are aiming for. In any case, again, don't fo focus on the quantity. Put your energy into evaluating each job and uh, you want to create high quality applications. True that um, I always say, if you feel that that job, uh, you can answer at least 70% of the job description, the requirements, just send out your CV. But having said that, be sure that you uh, you answer the, the main core of the requirements and that it's really a company that is, uh, is attractive to you. Read the job description carefully from start to finish. And I emphasize from start to finish because I recently saw research uh, that showed how people were absolutely certain that they read the job description carefully, but they don't. We usually, it's, it's just human. We start by reading carefully and then, you know, our attention wanes. So one thing that I use is I actually highlight the words, the requirements that I want to address uh, and that I see that are part of the, of the job description to make sure that I don't miss anything. Think about why this would be a job that you'd like. Do you really want it or are you severely compromising? Because that will come through when you apply and you interview. We really can't, you know, it's hard to, uh, to be that good an actor. Most of us aren't. Decide whether you could reasonably do this job by thinking of examples or things that you have done in the past. Have you in fact completed uh, roles or have you done tasks that are included in this job description? If so, go ahead and apply. Uh, we can use our transferable skills. If I sold refrigerators, I can probably sell other products. Take note of any instructions on how to apply. Sometimes they say, you, they ask you specific questions. They ask for a cover letter or they don't want one. They want to, the resume in Hebrew or in English. Just make sure that you do everything that they want. Um, if it's an online application, Carefully read and answer any question. Very often you can't go back. Or if, you, um, if you've stopped in the middle, you have to redo everything. And double check your responses before you submit, obviously. You can also find jobs by following companies on LinkedIn, on Google, on their websites, uh, on Instagram, on social media, like Facebook, on groups, mainly on LinkedIn, and by following people. You can identify um, C-level, meaning managers in those companies, and just follow um, what they're doing. And sometimes those people also follow uh, um, post jobs, if they are HR managers, if they're CEOs, Now, one of the big things I'd like you to do is think about targeting companies. We want to be very proactive in our job search. Um, and that is as opposed to just looking on job boards and sending your CV. Target companies, first just, you know, go all out. Create a wish list of companies you've always wanted to work for. Is it Google? Is it Amazon? Is it Microsoft? Is it, I don't know, um, some startup that you heard about 
just list it. You know, there's, um, there's nothing you can do wrong when you target a company. Now, how to do that effectively? Uh, the KBAC model can help you. You can start by, in the middle, listing your target company. It can be a company that you worked for in the past. It can be other companies in the field that, you, uh, that you're interested in. And then start mapping the company's clients, the, competi the competitors, who their associ um, the associates are and affiliates, who are their vendors. And that way you start from one or two companies and you create a whole landscape of companies that you could target and follow and see if they have job openings. Research them, see if these satellites are um, companies that you'd be interested in working for. Glassdoor is great that way. You can go in and look at any company, see how uh, former employees rated how they rate the salary, the management, uh, the advancement uh, opportunities, training, and so forth. Um, when you follow them on LinkedIn and on other social media, you can, um, again, gather information that will help you decide if these are companies that you would feel comfortable working for or that you'd like to work for. Questions about the KVAC model? Okay. Creating a list of 50 plus target companies because you can start with one or two, but obviously that will not be very efficient. Um, I really like to start with 10 and then expand my list. And I expanded by using this model. Once you have your list, you can start cultivating leads and network. That can be if you see, for instance, that there was a conference. Now everything is on Zoom, so everything is posted online. So who were the keynote speakers? Uh, who were the presenters? You can just reach out to them over social media. Obviously, LinkedIn is the classic way. Just network, network, network. Join professional groups where you can blog, you can see job offerings, you can see what the company is about. Um, is anyone from the company posting ideas, lectures? Um, do they write about their latest um, advancement? Are they asking questions such as, we're trying to solve this and this problem, has anyone any experience with implementing um, this software or using that tool? If you can answer those questions, you can noticed by recruiters as well as by those manager, managers. By searching for blogs by you know industry leaders and by key opinion leaders, again you can interact with them, you can see what they're writing about. This is also very educational. Uh, while you're looking for a job, you keep you know your your hand on the pulse of the industry and make sure you don't fall behind. Um, seven and eight are tricks that I've actually um, used myself or advised others to do and they've been very successful. Many cities and regions have industrial areas with their very own um, website. And on those websites, you have a list of companies and often they're divided by industry. So you can create a list of targeted companies by regional city so that you don't start looking for a job in Haifa if you're living in Tel Aviv. Uh, and they also very often have job boards. You can even drive around. You know, you live in Tel Aviv, you want to say work in Ramat Achayal, you take the bus or have someone drive you if you don't have a car and you just go building to building and uh, go into the lobby, you take a photo of the uh, companies that are there and start research researching them. It's lag work, but it's efficient if you want to do that. Um, by reading, you know, Globes, Arts, Jerusalem Post, they're in English, research your companies. Again, um, the more you know, the better uh, your starting point. 
And it's always good to search for current and previous employees of target companies and of course companies that you've worked for in the past. If you worked for a company overseas, you can look for people who work for it in Israel and reach out to them. It's a way to prepare for Aliyah if you haven't made Aliyah. Create a, a network base. You can ask people for advice. You know, um, Israelis are very open to that. And making Aliyah in three months, would you have some advice for me in preparation for, uh, for my Aliyah? Uh, in as much as so job search, where should I look? Whom should I meet? And so forth. Last but not least, use job boards as information portals and not just job uh, portals. So there are job boards and job portals. It's two different uh, things. Okay, so you have this whole plan and so many things to do and how do we make this efficient? So number one is the 70-20-10. Yes, 70% 70 of the time, should be dedicated to networking. And um, networking is in Israel really key. It's very, very often not so much about what you know, but about who you know. Um, and since you might not be here very long or you are not here yet, LinkedIn and social media in general are an amazing way to create a networking platform. Um, using all the tips I gave before and obviously you can reach out to us um, after this webinar well, as well. So 70% of the time networking. 20% of the time, sorry, should be dedicated um, to research, preparation and building your brand. Okay, so research companies, preparing for interviews, remembering that even the phone call is, um, is a, a phone interview, building your brand, as I mentioned before, um, and all that paperwork, so to speak. And only 10% should be devoted to searching and pursuing posted job leads. So you start with this, and then you go on to this, and finally, you dedicate the, the bulk of your work, of your time to networking. And the other tip I can give you is five activities, five days a week, focus on identifying opportunities and pursuing targets, and pursuing seven targets at a, at a time. And that is a way to ensure that um, your targets are available throughout your search. Having said all that, and having said that looking for a job is a full-time job, I encourage you to create a plan for yourself. If you're a morning person, maybe start your day with a walk outside because you know, you're going to be sitting at your computer for so many hours. And then just come back, and have a relaxing hour, I don't know, have breakfast, um, check your emails, and then dedicate as many hours as you want, two, three, four, five hours to working on your job search. Take a break, have a lunch break, have a nap, you know, enjoy some time off your job search so that you don't feel that stressed. Include some fun time. Um, just the other day I told a, a a coach of mine uh, as, as a task to go at least once a week out to a cafe with a book, have a cup of coffee and just read a book because it was so stressing out and that's what we tend to do. We need the job, but it, you know, with this as well, it's about balance. Uh, Michal, there's a question in the chat. What's, yes. what's the difference between job boards and job portals? Okay, so job boards are a little bit like, um, think about the newspapers, right? Um, if those of you who remember, we used to open the, uh, the adverts in the newspaper and circle the job uh, adverts that we liked. Job portals usually offer more than that. Uh, very often there's blogs and there, you can um, 
go deeper. You can click on the company that has advertised the job opening and you can see other jobs. You can go on, you can use that as a beginning up for your search. So it's more than just the ad, it's a whole world out there. Um, as an example, uh, uh, take Israel employee. They have uh, ads but they have tips and they have ideas and they have other information. Or in Hebrew, we have all jobs, uh, which is in fact a job board, but it does have background information on companies that you can use. Um, so that's the main difference. And uh, Anthony is asking, is there, is there a list of job boards? Yes, we have um, job yes. boards that we can send you. And by the way, um, on Facebook, there also there are very many groups on Facebook for uh, job seekers. And they too have many job postings, but they also have tips and you can post the fact that you're looking for a job. So the idea is to, to make more of your job search than just clicking on ads. So since I was, saying 70% of your time should be uh, dedicated to networking. Obviously, social media is your main goal. It's a good idea to maintain an active account on at least one of uh, the most used social media platforms. And LinkedIn, obviously, is the number one for, um, for professional pur purposes. Um, with Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, following. Um, now, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, you can have both a personal account and professional page. In LinkedIn, unless you're a company, um, I would just stay with the, with the regular profile. Um, and it might be a good idea if you're a freelancer or do a lot of contract work, it might be a good idea for you to have both. In fact, they would complement each other. You would have your professional um, uh, account and then your personal one and it makes people feel like they know you a little better um, so the professional one would be that talk all about your professional side and what you've accomplished professionally and the personal one can be a little bit softer with your other skills and maybe a little bit about you um, as a person and that makes people feel like they know you it's actually on LinkedIn I always say uh, Put in, you know, something that's personal. If you have a motto, if you've, uh, you have a reason for liking uh, what you're doing, uh, it, cre it creates for a connection. So say you do have um, your social media presence, um, what you should and shouldn't do. So first of all, create an online presence, decide which you want to use, is it one, is it two, is it all of them? And then be sure to be consistent. Uh, use similar, you know, you want to brand yourself. So use similar colors, um, use similar images, um, use similar content. It doesn't have to be the same, but just so that it's a brand, it's you. Oh, you know, that's in orange, so that's Moshe. Google your name and check what is online. Um, I was, um, was giving a webinar to a group of uh, recent graduates and this girl came up to me and said, you know, I worked at a bar when I was studying and uh, it's nothing really provocative, but we used to dance on the bar, all clothes on, but what should I do? And my advice was to either, you know, take out those photographs all together or to set your privacy on Facebook uh, and make sure that only your friends and family can see the photos that you don't want others to see. So just see what's online about. You can use someone else's account to, to see that. When you share stories, make sure to make them positive. No one wants to see you badmouth a former or a current employer. Um, uh, it just looks bad and it makes one wonder what would you say about them? You know, it's like writing about your ex. Um, 
this is marketing. So I'm all for uh, creating win-win situations. If, you, if you're on a group on LinkedIn and someone is asking for advice, if you can help them out, I'm sure that, you know, what goes around comes around and you, you will be helped. So give to get or help to be helped. Uh, if you can link someone with someone uh, in your network or something like that. I'm often asked, should I connect with anyone who asks me? And again, like with jobs, I'm always um, for quality over quantity. Make sure that that person is someone that you actually want and would be helpful to you um, if, if you can't co um, connect with them. And um, like with share, sharing positive stories, be careful what you tweet. Um, I actually recently did that. I searched, I hate my job tweets. Um, don't do that. <laughs> That's what I want to say. It looks bad. Um, okay. Uh, and as I said, check your Facebook for privacy settings. Make sure that nobody sees what you don't want them to see. And again, network. And if you're employed, use your own time to search. Some companies actually monitor your time on the computer. You don't want them to catch you in the act. Okay, your next steps in engaging with professional peers. Do we have questions? Okay, so how do we do that? Um, you, you targeted companies and you can target um, professional peers. Uh, on LinkedIn, for instance, you can look for influencers or um, people you admire and you can follow them or friend them. You, can, you can't always friend people if they have more than 10,000 friends then you can no longer friend them, you'll have to follow them. So other professionals, hiring managers, um, managers in companies that you are targeting and so forth, anyone you can think of that would help you get to that job. Engage with the content by liking and commenting. Um, I mentioned groups on LinkedIn, it's a great, or, or their blogs. It's really a great way to interact and at the same time to brand yourself. If you're comfortable with actually saying, oh, wow, that's a great idea or a great concept or thank you for sharing, you can simply like the, um, the article or the post. Um, if, you can, if you feel uh, open to that or by sharing it. You can interact with the content. As I said, you can share it, you can remark, you can um, maybe write a little bit about it. Okay, so um, by engaging, again, you expand your network. Um, I noticed that whenever I write something and post it on, on LinkedIn, with the next few days, there will be a huge surge in views of my, uh, of my profile. And that's what you want. You want views of your profile. Um, if you can then see who viewed your profile, you can connect with them if they haven't reached out to you. Um, and that way you reach your goal of at least 501 uh, connections on LinkedIn. Uh, Michal, there's a question here about what format should you send your cover letter? PDF or what? And CV. The cover letter should be should be in the body of the email, unless they ask for a, for a, a, a separate document with the letter. In which case, I, I always urge you to use Word documents and not PDF in Israel. Um, using uh, the, the companies use ATS. These are software that is used to uh, to sift through CVs and they don't always uh, read PDFs. So for documents, nobody's going to mess with your documents. So send a, a Word document. If you feel comfortable with vlogging or 
making uh, short videos, I urge you to do that. 54% so of people said that they, um, uh, that they would rather do that um, and 59% would rather see a video than read content. Now, a way to do that is just create 20 seconds short videos with a tip. If you're a teacher, you can talk about um, why you like teaching or an accomplishment. If you're a sales, just a short sales pitch. Um, you can record yourself. It doesn't have to be fancy. It's a really great way to make a difference. Or you can record yourself saying, I recently made a LIA, I'm a salesperson, I'm looking for, for a job. You know, just that elevator pitch is a great way for a very short way, um, uh, vlog to, to introduce yourself to the community. Uh, someone's, I do update your LinkedIn profile if you're on Khalat. Do you leave it as, as it is? Okay. Um, so that's really um, a LinkedIn question. Uh, not really about your job uh, strategy, but what you do is um, you can, uh, first of all, you can, you can write presently on Khalat. Um, there is a way to go to your job, uh, job settings and updating with a green frame saying I'm open for jobs. Um, if you, if you want, you know, we can send you the link to, I mentioned that I showed how to do that on the last LinkedIn uh, webinar. Okay, so why your social media present is so important. 90% of companies, um, and I've heard 92 or 94% of companies are using uh, social media to hire. And in fact, um, 35% was in 2018. I think numbers have risen since then. And I've heard of a few instances where people received a CV, the candidate was ideal and he was not hired because he did not have a social media presence, more specifically LinkedIn. Especially if you are in any tech related, scientific related uh, role, um, you just have to have a LinkedIn presence. Um, passive recruiting is increasing. Uh, very often there's a, there's a whole new role of headhunters and sourcing that is done on LinkedIn. Uh, so make sure, and again, I mentioned that in our uh, LinkedIn webinar, don't write anything um, along the lines of um, presently looking for a job or looking for my next position or anything like that on your headline. You can use that, uh, that frame um, on your, your profile photo and put in industry related uh, words into your headline so that you can be found. Okay, so again, some numbers. Where do recruiters um, look for candidates? 87% 80, are looking on LinkedIn, 55% on Facebook, and 47% on Twitter. So be there. What do they look for? So the main concern many uh, recruiters have is how are you going to fit into the company's um, culture? So they're looking for sub conduct and they do social screening for supporting qualifications. They want to make sure that everything you've written on your CV is true. So if you've completed a course, go ahead and advertise it on your social media. I just completed an SEO course, yay to me. Don't be shy about that. They're looking for it. 61% are looking for that. 50% um, is social media professional. So they're looking for your professional qualifications. They're looking for your professional conduct and 37% are looking to see what others are looking are saying about you. So if you can get references um, on your LinkedIn profile from former peers or people that you work with, it's important. OK, 
Okay. Questions? Anyone? No? Okay, just one second. How are we doing for time? We're good. Okay. So this is a, a again, it's a suggestion for a job search checklist. Um, and we, we can send that to you. So I would start by creating a portfolio of work and evaluations. Um, again, we spoke about the PVP. This can really help you focus on what you want and focus on what you want to project and present. If you, um, if you can create a portfolio, if you're a coder, if you are a teacher, uh, you know, you can create, a, say, a syllabus um, uh, and um, teaching um, content that you developed. Um, if you have, you know, very often in an interview, they will ask you, if I were to phone your last boss, what would you tell me about you? And if you can produce that evaluation, say, oh, well, you know, in my last evaluation, uh, my direct manager said that I was uh, great at problem solving. So there you go. Number two, create a professional email address. Nothing like Moshe 77 or Mam of Three. Um, not really very professional. If you have a problem that you your name is Moshe Cohen and there are 300 other Moshe Cohens, uh, try and think of a way that would work with, um, the, you know, nothing that would be uh, personal or too funny. And um, use an email signature. Really create a professional email signature with all your content information so that when you send your email with your cover letter inside and the attached um, CV, they will have your in your email signature your full name, um, your LinkedIn profile, the link to your LinkedIn profile, your your uh, your phone number, don't, don't make them guess. Um, a professional greeting or main voicemail is a bit dated, but if you, for some reason, do use a voicemail on your home phone or on your cell phone or wherever, just make sure it's very professional, not your family. Accomplishment stories are um, really close, re closely related to evaluations. If you can remember, uh, th those projects that you really accomplished well, that you can use again to, uh, to complete your PVP, your CV, your LinkedIn profile, um, use them in your interview. Just write them down and have them. Have at least three, preferably five. Uh, it can be three from your last uh, company and two from the previous one and one from when you were a student. It doesn't really matter as long as it highlights your skills, your experience uh, and what you bring to, um, to the next job. You don't necessarily have to limit yourself to one job title um, and also do a little bit of research. Indeed is a great tool, job ad, um, ads not always the job title that you're used to from overseas will be used in Israel. We tend to use more American job titles. So make sure that you use the correct job title and understand what that job titles means, not only in Israel, but in specific companies. I have heard of, um, you know, regional manager uh, is usually a salesperson who is in charge of a specific region, but at Intel, for instance, it's actually a factory manager. Uh, so it's different. Uh, create a targeted, strategically focused resume for each of your job titles. So if you've decided to go for an administrative manager and teacher, you should have two resumes and you should change them according to the specific ads. Make sure that you understand what the requirements uh, are on that ad and make you sure that you're using the same, same terminology in your resume. As we said, create a list of companies to follow and target. Write your answers to the dreaded interview questions. If you, you're not sure which interview questions are customary in Israel, uh, Look on our website. Uh, we we have um, I have a blog on interview questions. 
and we can send you some more questions as well. Create your elevator speech. Brush up your LinkedIn profile and make a listing of at least 100 people you know. Um, as, as I said, 500 plus people that you want to connect with on LinkedIn so that you can network, network, network. Cover letter and thank you letter templates. Um, as I started saying before, in Israel, people don't really read, but um, I have seen uh, on job ads, please include a cover letter and say why you think you'd be good for this role. Um, you can create a template, but again, adapt it to the specific ad. And a thank you letter template is for after the interview. Thank you for having me if you need some more information and so forth. You can find many templates online. There's no really one good one, as long as it's personalized. You don't want to send a generic one. Make sure that you've changed the name of the person and the role and the time you were there. Things have happened. You can create networking email templates that you can use either in emails or on LinkedIn. Uh, one of the things I encourage people to do, and now it's not as easy to, to go on uh, little coffee meetings, but if you can reach out to people and ask them you know, how they would suggest that you go about your, your job search, um, you can send them a little email before or after. Um, like I said before, I'm looking for a job. I've recently made a LIA. I see that you are in the business that I would like to, uh, to go into. Would you have any words of wisdom for me? Um, can we have a, you know, a short conversation on Zoom or, or um, on, on the phone? And always come out with uh, a, a name of two afterwards. Who do you think I should talk to? And then, you know, obviously, thank you for talking to me and thank you for directing me and, and so forth. I suggest you create folders to hold job postings, your resume and cover letters. You just want to be able to monitor what you send and to whom. It just, you know, you send out so many emails and unfortunately in Israel, they very seldom come back to you and say, thank you for sending us your um, your job application, unfortunately, or you know, we're in the process and we'll contact you. So by following up uh, and creating spreadsheets to track your job uh, applications and to track your uh, networking uh, contacts, it just makes you feel more in control of the process. And um, I found out this um, Jibber Jobber, it actually creates uh, spreadsheets that help you track networking contacts and other contacts. It's really a fun tool to use, so Jibber Jobber. And a time tracking spreadsheet, and obviously keeping your calendar. I basically dump everything into my calendar from tasks to meetings, uh, to ideas, um, I use it as, as a uh, you know, vision board and um, a way to keep track of everything. So whatever works for you. And last but not least, keeping positive. Anything is possible. And you'll be hired. Time questions. Um, any other questions? We can, I think we can uh, um, unmute. Um, Michael? You can unmute yes. yourself if you would like. Um, is, is there um, some kind of uh, network group for retirees who wish to work? Um, I don't think there is a specific one. Uh, but, you know, when you're looking for, uh, on group, Facebook groups such as um, group for multilinguals or part-time jobs or admin jobs, you very often will find uh, jobs for retirees as well. Um, I think it's a great, um, you know, those Facebook groups are also a great way to interact. Don't be shy about saying, you know, I've recently retired. It doesn't matter if you've recently retired. I'm, I'm retired. I'm looking for just... 
we want, I said, help and be helped. So this is a way to reach out to the community and people um, I see are very, very open about giving suggestions. You know, I'm looking for a job as a, ret as a retiree um, in, you know, say what you're looking for, how many hours, um, the region, the more specific you are. I know we want to say we're open to anything. But in fact, when we say we're open to anything, we're limiting the other person. We are not helping them helping us. Uh, it's okay to say I can tutor English uh, or I can be a receptionist in an office or um, in a medical practice. Um, it's easier than saying it's easy for the other party than when we say I'll do anything. I mean, will you sweep? Uh, the streets probably not will you uh, do gardening jobs I don't know right so rather than it, you say you want to say I'm flexible I'm, I'm open but be as specific as you can does that make sense okay any other questions I see someone's on the chat uh, are there business uh, international meetings and they're like, in the, yes, um, if there are, um, if you go into BNI Israel, there are networking events. I think they used to meet Thursday mornings at seven in the Ranana industrial area. Um, but uh, what I would suggest is going onto BNI Israel uh, website and finding out. Um, Especially now with the COVID, I don't know if they hold uh, Zoom meetings or in-person meetings. Okay, for someone who's not tech savvy, is this someone you recommend working through LinkedIn with me? Um, okay, um, so we can send you, um, I created a, um, like a list of things to do uh, to create a LinkedIn uh, presence and there are those two webinars and once you've done that you know we can uh, also have a, a zoom meeting and try and help you further um, it's quite expensive to have someone do your LinkedIn profile for you I've heard of anything between 700 shekels and 1500 shekels so The name of the website is, uh, do you mean Jibba Jabba? Not sure which, which one was meant. Uh, networking one? Um, not sure. BNI websites. Oh, the BNI. Um, it's, it's called BNI Israel, I think. If you Google BNI Israel, you should be able to find it. If you can't find it, drop us a line. I have. Uh, I think I know someone who uh, who was or is on that specific group in Rana. All right. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us tonight. I hope um, I gave you some impulses. If you uh, have specific questions, um, then you know, feel free to drop us a line. We can um, um, set a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you to help you further. Yes, and uh, I will be sending out an email to all participants. Uh, some requests were already made for information and please feel free to be in touch with uh, any other inquiries and as Michal said we're very happy to have a uh, one-on-one -on -one Zoom meetings uh, with any of you that uh, require additional assistance with your CV, with LinkedIn, in general employment uh, issues, uh, we're here for you. Okay, uh, I see there's one question from Chris, so um, I'll say in general Trying to find a job in Israel before you made Aliyah is difficult. We've had really, I don't know, no more than five successes. Um, but it's a great idea to start interacting and creating that networking platform uh, in view of, of your Aliyah.
again, you know, I'm, we're happy to, to create a Zoom meeting with you and answer more questions uh, in person. Okay. Great. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Okay. Nice to Thank see you. you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone.